Volume up. All right, how's that? Can you hear better? Can we, I wonder if they could turn up on the lights okay, up front. Okay, here's our agenda for the evening. I'll give you a minute to look at it. But yeah, not much more than a minute. Maybe only 30 seconds. Okay, uh, first off, I, I want to make some acknowledgments. Running an Aram is not an easy thing to do. It requires a major time commitment. And uh, I had thought about uh, developing a slide that had a list of names on it, but that list would probably take several slides. But I did have one particular person who helped me immensely, and that would be my wife, Jackie. Yay! Without her support, uh, I could not have done this. Uh, she really tolerated a lot of uh, late nights, early mornings, long hours. So most, my biggest thanks to my wife. I have a number of mentors that uh, uh, helped me out quite a bit. Uh, uh, their former NARAM CDs, uh, Ryan Coleman, Chad Ring in particular. I spent a lot of hours on the phone with Chad. He had a fair go at it. Romance. You know about that? Romance. Then it was Lila Schmaker. And last but not least, Ed LaCroix who really got me kick-started. I spent quite a few hours on the phone with him, too. And there are many other people who helped me a lot. I'm getting comments. Okay. I'm going to acknowledge one more person by name, and that would be Steve Sainer. He's the guy who ran a website, helped design the logo. I think Ed LaCroix helped me with that too. Uh, and he, he, uh, he ran the registration system uh, and, you know, uh, got it going. The NAR gave me quite a bit of support and they, the, the registration system that you saw this year is a new NAR system and uh, it's going to be used going forward my understanding for national event registration. Got a few bugs in it yet, but it worked pretty good, I think. But there were many other people, and I'm not gonna even try to name all the people, including many of you here in the room. I mean, uh, 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 you, uh, you showing up for range duty and doing your part makes NARAM run itself. One other uh, note, I uh, did actually have some volunteers on site. I had guys running the Rangers. I don't know if anybody liked that. <laughs> I didn't get that reaction. And then uh, we also had a number of volunteers from the Civil Air Patrol. That was coordinated by Colonel John O'Neill, who is the Missouri Wing Commander for the Civil Air Patrol. Also, you may or may not know, this year's NARAM is a collaboration between six different rocket clubs. I'm not going to read them all off. More like a conspiracy. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Mark Johnson labeled this uh, this organization a conspiracy to commit NARAM, and we committed it. <laughs> with that, let's start with the awards. My prize committee is in place, 
This is A Division, open spot landing. Come on up and get your prize. Make sure they know to stand there. Oh, I wasn't going to read the names, but I played them. Zachary Stenberg, Brian Estrada, Matthias Almstead. Start Once again this year, I'm continuing the tradition that was started by uh, Ed LaCroix. Cash in a photo. Plus, in addition, Estes Industries supplies scale model kits for first through third place in A, B, and C division. Um, there's a Little Joe 2 kit for first place. A Mercury Redstone for second, and a Nike Smoke for third.
much this, the rest of your night. No. Take it. Okay. Like a break between me and Steve. The head of my prize says it doesn't. It doesn't end at the back. You have some protection. John. Okay, let's move on. Hey, John. G streamer. John, this event. can I get the rest of the light? I'm one of the few contest directors in the country, maybe the only contest director in the country, that has actually flown this Who's there? event in a regional minute meet for four times, I think it is, that I've flown it. So I hope you enjoyed my choice. So, A Division, Zachary Stenberg, Zachary Crampton, and Brian Estrada. Come on down. Hey guys, smile. Look here. Alright. 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 No, because you don't want to be You want to be You want to be slow. Yeah. 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 Bulbs must be out. Yeah. See how the bulb there is out? I need those that light up the corner here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The first one looks dark. These are lit up because these, are, because these lights are out. G Streamer Duration C Division. Carolyn Stenberg. Wow. Oh. And that was her. Okay, she was a sport flyer, and that was her uh, optional flight. Chris Flanagan. David Lucas. Richard Sullivan. Then the, then the right order, Chris. Hey, Chris. Yeah. You're, you're number two. And Scoop. Chris, are they, are they on your mark? <laughs> Sorry. G Streamer Duration, C Division. Yeah.
just a little explanation about uh, the logo that we choose chose for this event. Uh, you may have heard a few people around you refer to this as the heavy metal marum. That's because I'm a big fan of heavy metal music. And so the patch that we designed, Arum 58, that is an Iron Maiden font. And of course it has the St. Louis arch spanning the distance between Walnut Grove and St. Louis, which is the home of the St. Louis Rocketry Association, which I'm from. I'm also from Launch Crew. And uh, around the outside of the patch, you'll see six numbers. Those are the sec section numbers of the clubs that participated in this venture. And finally, the logo of St. Louis Rocketry Association has a rocket flying through the arch, uh, but I changed the rocket to a Flying B guitar, which is much beloved by heavy metal guitarists. <laughs> and if you got to the range early, you might have actually heard some heavy metal music playing on the PA system. John Hockheimer bought a new PA system, and we discovered that you can Bluetooth into it from your phone. So, we do the door prizes now? No, at the end. When are we doing the prizes? At the end. Okay, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Gary Cole, who was uh, one of the principals involved in the support range, and he's going to make a few comments about that. Well, we survived. We did it. 791 flights. And, and no one passed out that I saw. We did hand out a lot of water. And uh, Saturday and Sunday particularly was, was tough on the range. Uh, it was a great team effort. Uh, I want to thank all of the volunteers, and many of you in the room. Uh, you did you know, just a yeoman's job helping out. Uh, Ted was on the mic and the LCO desk a lot. Dave helped us out. Steve was in, uh, indispensable to helping us make this thing go. Um, we unfortunately had some major Kato's off the way cell, which was unfortunate, but it happens. But everything was safe. Everything was uh, within our control. And I really, really had personally a great time helping with this. Uh, Marty uh, Cox from our club, Triple Mocan. Um, Really, we were the two representatives here for the, for the duration from our club. We were delighted to be involved. Um, Steve, are we going to do this now, John? The sport rain? Uh, no, it's a little farther down. A little farther down, okay. Yeah. So, um, the, um, as, as my wife asked me several times over the last 10 days that I've been here, are you ever going to do this again? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know about a NARAM, but an but uh, NSL might not be out of bounds, so future consideration. But thanks again, uh, we had a great time. Okay, time for some more awards. D Rocket Glider, multi-round, A division. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you may, may have noticed we did not allow radio control in Rocket Glider. And the purpose of that was to put the emphasis on craftsmanship and performance rather than picking thermals. So at any rate, A Division, Ryan Estrada, Zachary Stenberg, and so we have, uh, we have an issue with the What's all Richardson. Jay Richardson. Oh, Jay Richardson. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi, everybody. It's really great for us to be here with you again. As some of you may know, Lita and I used to run a rocket company. <laughs> if you are one of our early rocketeers, one who answered our mail order ads, sent in your request for a catalog, and flew Estes rockets, I have some serious questions for you. I want to know, are you the one who wrote and asked for a new catalog because your little brother had flushed your first one down the toilet? <laughs> or perhaps you are the one who claimed your dog had eaten your catalog. Are you the one that with your vacationing family driving through the state of Wyoming and in, ins insisted on a, a small 400 mile detour, <laughs> round trip tour to Penrose to spend 30 minutes touring the Estes plant. <laughs> Were you one of the 12 year olds that had your first rocket captured by a rocket-eating tree. <laughs> if so, you have a lot of company. <clears throat> Are you the one who sent us your original rocket design to be published in the Model Rocket News? Are, the, are you the one who failed to send enough money with your order, <laughs> but received it anyway with a request to send the shortage with your next order? Are you the one that mowed lawns or delivered papers to make enough money to buy your next rocket? Are you the one that mailed <clears throat> your order on Monday? then began running to meet the postman on Tuesday <laughs> to see if your new rocket was tucked away in his mailing bag. Some have told us they became first name buddies with their mailman. Are you the one who sent a question and received a handwritten note uh, in response? Are you the one who flew rockets as a young teenager, then discovered girls, <laughs> then came back to flying rockets as a born-again rocketeer when you had kids of your own? Are you the one who launched your lifetime career by building and flying a simple model rocket? Are you the one that got in trouble with your teacher because you thought reading the Estes catalog was your homework assignment? <laughs> Are you the one that can't put your car in the garage because it is filled with rockets and rocket building materials? No, not yet. Are you the one that came to Raram each year? because you love to compete and be with others who share your interest. Are you the one, <clears throat> are you one of the NAR volunteers who pays forward by mentoring <coughs> young rocketeers in your area? If you are any of the above, Glenn and I are happy to call you one of our very special friends. We thank you for your friendship and please accept from the Vern and Lita team our 65th year anniversary packet we are providing to each of you. Please enjoy the rest of the evening and we look forward to seeing you at a future NARA. Thank you.
Thank you, Burns. So one more. For one short. Yes, I was going to say, I knew I was missing at least one of them. Back to the awards. A helicopter, A division. J. Richardson. Zachary Stenberg. Ryan Estrada. Matthias Almstead. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in second place with an error of 8.89%, Marty Cox. And Marty gets a H motor and a 2460 casing. In third place, and he uh, doesn't have to go very far here with an error of 10.83%, Gary Cole. That's 2440. And in fourth place, Tom Ha. <laughs> Shake the winner's hand. <laughs> 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 you doing great. Okay. Okay. The other event we flew was multiple egg law altitude event. And a couple differences here from the standard NAR competition for model rockets. One, you could launch between two and six eggs. And a broken egg did not necessarily disqualify you and change the weighing factor for the event. Uh, so we had some broken eggs out there. We probably still have about uh, seven dozen eggs left. So uh, we're going to start a new event after the awards is, are over. We're going to do the narrow 58 egg toss in the parking lot behind the building. So you might want to change for that event. And uh, as I repeat up here, Marty Cox was first place. He launched three eggs, broke zero, had an actual altitude of 1,614 feet, and with the uh, success factor, he had an altitude of 1,937 feet, a score. And he gets an I motor and a 720 feet. By the way, we had nine participants in the set altitude. Uh, we had four participants in the egg loft event. And the second place person was me. <laughs> not, not, a, not a very impressive score. I had an actual altitude of 844 feet with four eggs, but I broke one. And when you break one egg in this event, that gives you a weighing factor of 0.5. So the score was 422. So, those were our two qualified flights in this event. I uh, just want to say thanks to Aerotech and thanks John for letting us do this. Tomahawk. These were sponsored by Aerospace Specialty Products and of course Estes who has donated kits. Come on up.
B Division E scale altitude. Alyssa Stenberg flying a Black Brant VB. Aaron Joe IQSY Tomahawk. Clay Beaver IQSY Tomahawk. Come on up. Scale altitude, C division. John Stenberg flying a, a Black Brant VB. Keith Vineyard also flying a VB, Black Brant. Mark Snoffer, can't read that. Black Brant, oh, Black Brant 4. And how about that? In fourth place, John Buckley. How do you get that? <laughs> Again, we're going to have one place. Alyssa Stenberg also flying the B. 
This is our team. I'm not a member of that, but my brother Tom is a member of that, so I'm going to represent him today. David Gregorick was one of the founding members of the Columbus Society for the Advancement of Model Rocketry. He was a very active junior member of that club in the A Division for NAR 9204 and took great pride in carrying everything that he built when he built it. It wasn't just a rocket to David. It was a work of art and demonstrated gave great care and detail to craftsmanship when he built. He took great pride in what he launched and what he built. Unfortunately, David was developed, developed leukemia at a young age and passed away at that point. In honor of David, this David Gregorick Award is given for outstanding craftsmanship in a non-scale modeling event. Our young competitors do not know ahead of time which event this award is based upon. It is judged as they bring their award, their uh, models up and they check in. It is an A category. It represents outstanding craftsmanship and pride in their competition models. In honor of David Gregory and in memory of his love of rocketry and his level of detailed craftsmanship in his building, this year's winner is Ryan Estrada. Yes. 
Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not from Research and development, A division. Third place, Jay Richardson.
Third place, neutron fusion, telescoping, piston launcher. Second place, Royal Rocketeers. Number of batteries to fire and batteries. First place, altimeter buddies again. Altimeter testing with a vacuum screen. Scrunch in. Squeeze in. Smile, freeze. R and D team to the top. Okay, at this point I'm going to take take a moment uh, to do my best imitation of Tom Beach, which isn't really very good. But Tom Beach is looking for uh, authors of articles for the NARAM uh, uh, Sport Rocketry Special Edition. He's looking for A helicopter duration, open spot landing. C parachute duration, multi-round, E scale altitude. I think R and D's already been covered, but uh, maybe not. Also, if anybody would like to write articles on the off-field activities like cannon auction, uh, uh, research and development presentations, that kind of thing, the town hall meeting, any of that, uh, that's available. I got CPD. You got CPD? I got CPD. Okay. I got ECO. Okay. okay. Come see me afterwards so I don't have to write it down now. <laughs> right. I'll have to okay. Got it. Covered it. Moving along. The next item is the Black Newsletter Award. I don't know a lot about this, but Tom Beach normally presents it. So he has asked me to stand in. This is a, an award that is given for the, the best uh, Rocket Club newsletter. And this year, it goes to the Launch Rack, which is a publication of the Garden State Space Modeling Society. Is there anybody here from that organization? I don't think so. There it is. And I understand there's a special box or something. Oh yeah, the special box that comes with it that has secret stuff inside of it. Uh, there was also an honorable mention given to the uh, newsletter from Cosmo. Next up, the beautiful field that you flew on this week is owned by our special celebrity guest tonight, Tom and Kathy Tipton. And
they liked you too. <laughs> yeah, the cows we discovered like to lick ammonium perchlorate residue. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. So, anyway, I want to again thank you folks for your generosity and hospitality. We had a good week. It was fun. Okay. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our newly minted NAR president. John Hawkeye. He wants to lease the place. <laughs> I have a checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> Page speech, it'll keep you here for the next hour and a half, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I won't do that. Um, thank you, John. And first of all, I want to congratulate all the competitors and um, people who participated on the, in the sport range. Another round. How many people here? Was it your first time competing? Awesome. We'll see you back next year? Maybe. Maybe. Depends on where it is. <laughs> Michigan would be nice. Michigan would be very nice. Next thing I'd like to do is, is recognize um, the, the accomplishments of past competitors, and in particular, there's two um, that deserve some recognition, Fred Williams and Norman Maines. Um, both of these gentlemen passed away this year, so we, we just want to recognize them as um, part of the rocketry and competition community. Rockstar impression, right? Um, I also want to again recognize all the, the vendors and sponsors, and I'll go down the list real, real fast. But we, we really do appreciate the support that our vendors and companies like Estes, um, Aurora, but Apogee Components, Aerospace Specialty Products, Balsa Machining Service, Aerotech Rocketry, Estes, E Rockets, Impulse Buys, Discount Rocketry. Oh, Country Line Hobbies, can't read my writing. North, North Coast Rocketry, Bellevue Hobby, Art Applewhite Rockets, New Way Space Models, Aurora Flight Sciences, and Flight Systems International. <laughs> the, the next thing I'd like to talk about um, the concerns are our, our B Divisioners, and we, we do two things for B Division competitors. One is that um, the NAR, through the board, sponsors travel grants to the B Divisioners every year. And this year we had two participants who received our travel grants. That was Aaron Joves and Clay Beaver. a little seed money to get you interested in, in model rocketry and in competition and then we will see you back in future years. And um, I believe the, the board will continue this practice so those of you that know B Division potential competitors, that there is an application process and, and we do it every spring for the upcoming competition season. So um, stay tuned. 
The next thing I'd like to do is ask Bob Alway to come up. And um, Bob, through his continued <coughs> generosity, has sponsored R&D awards for B Division competitors for the past, oh my gosh, what, five, six? Since 2004. <coughs> Since 2004, wow, so a long time. Um, so Bob, I'd like you to present the awards for this year. Alrighty, well, I kind of got missed, I think, in the, in the border of things going on, which is why I was snarling at John a little bit earlier. But uh, Alyssa Stenberg and Aaron Jones, I believe that's first and second place, uh, will receive uh, $1,000 and $600 as an award in addition to the other prizes for their B Division R&D uh, projects. Thank you, Bob. It's through generosity of, of members like you that, that keep things like this going. So thanks a lot, Bob. All right, as you can see, I, I have a, a heavy stack of uh, awards that, to give out this year. Um, John, you, you've done an awesome job um, bringing <coughs> together a, a lot of people within the rocketry community um, somebody said something about herding cats or some kind of coalition or whatever but um, it, it amazed me that you got six clubs to work together towards this common goal um, and I think this is a first I don't know that we've ever had a, a formal um, arrangement where we we've had this many organizations working together towards this goal so gr great job so with that I have some plaques that I'd like to present on behalf of the board to some of the, the clubs and people that help make this um, come about. So first, Tom and Kathy, you're not gonna get away from here with nothing. <laughs> so I'm gonna make you come up here and at least get your picture taken with me. But um, on behalf of the National Association of Rock Duke, we wanna thank you for um, being the landowner and generously donating the use of your land for a little bit over a week. to the Missouri Civil Air Patrol, again, thanking them for their participation. Is anybody here from the Civil Air Patrol? No, they had to go home. Okay. Uh, they had to go save somebody, I'm sure. But um, we'll see that they get this. But on, on behalf of the, the NAR board, we want to recognize the, their participation. Um, I was in charge of one of the timing groups. I was, I was in charge of one of the timing groups, and I, I was amazed at the, the attention to detail that this group put, and the fact that they were just there day in and day out for, for several days to, to really help us out in the crunch when we had a lot of um, very high, what was that, G streamer models that yeah. we couldn't see, but um, they, they did a great job, and, and we really appreciate it. All right, so, Next group I want to recognize is, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to butcher this one, but the Teeny Monday Rocket Club. Um, as a host section, we want to thank you for participating and helping with this. Somebody here from that group? All right. You're our prefect. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
now the the guy that I get plaques made from, um, he loves me now. And um, <laughs> you know, I said, Joe, you know it's going to be rough this this time, and I need you to print a lot of plaques for me. And you know his eyes lit up, and he said, Oh, great! I'll you know help you out every program. And um, I just got to say, we've gone to this new format of plaques, and these guys do an awesome job. I mean, it's it's really cool stuff. So. Um, next, I want to recognize Kansas City Association of Rocketry. Again, another host section. Somebody here from that group? Kansas Organization for Space Modeling, and another host section. St. Louis Rocketry or St. Louis Association of Rocketry again another host section. something but I had in my notes. So um, last but certainly not least, John. Lots yeah. of goodies for you. So John Buckley on behalf of the National Association of Rocketry, we thank you for your service for being contest director. You also get one of these beautiful plaques. We have some well wishes from a lot of the participants, and um, yeah, the patch you cannot buy that I've almost lost many, many times in, in the many remodels and moving around in my house, but I keep on finding them at the last minute, the Narum CD patch.
world. <laughs> oh, yeah. gee, champions, we almost forgot. <laughs> so, let's begin with, these are the, the NARAM champions. These are people who have won the NARAM meet. That's just all the events that we had this past week. Okay, and do it that way. First place, Zach Stenberg. Second, Ryan Estrada. <laughs> Champions A Division. B Division, Narrow Champions. Let's see how this one comes out. Melissa Stenberg is first. Second, Aaron Joe. C Division Narrow Champs. First place. I wonder who that is. <laughs> He's been here.
Team division champs. First place, Neutron Fusion. It says lamp ladder outside, but if you look at your fire escapes, 
that was done on sign on the back of your doors and your rooms? It says Ramada Inn. <laughs> Thanks, they knew we were coming. And last night I found a stepladder under the stairs by the Ozark room. It said Drury on it. I'm, I'm waiting to try to find the Dave or the Hampton or whatever next. These guys don't know who they are. So, well, and on that note, I mean, you know, right down the street, we can't forget about it. I have to nominate the Ramada Inn right down the street because it's there. Thank God we're not in this. So, it might have been, but still, still. To be fair, the Wi Fi is probably my fault. I'm uploading to YouTube 24 7. Probably. So, let's see. It's kind of move around here. Um, what, what do we have to nominate this year? There were was, there was several good things, nothing like over the top, but a lot of decent stuff. Um, Mark Job's E scale altitude today, he got it back after a cow stepped on it. <laughs> now that's his excuse for damage points. We'll see, you know, we'll see if that's right or not. Um, Captain congratulate altimeter buddies again. Uh, we finished Naram this year on a misfire. And they didn't just do any, oh, oh, the igniter didn't light it. They had misfired eight motors at once. That takes talent. Good job, Dan and Mary. <laughs> PMC that he you know, tried to make a postal digger out of her this morning. That was nice to see. Um, Mark Wise level 2 cert that he totally destroyed an easy eye and everyone wants to hear that <laughs> again. So, you know, nice try though, but you know, maybe next time. Um, I have to nominate uh, our previous president, Ted. He gave us quite a show on Saturday with his uh, M2400 and his original L3 cert rocket, which Cato. And then the grains went on up in the air with a nice blue flame streak. And then the three grains separated in three directions. I mean, it was beautiful. <laughs> I don't know if it was him or Gary that collaborated on this, but it was pretty nice. So, and in, in the line with, you know, you know, pyro displays, I have to nominate myself because my G-Streamer pyro display on Tuesday on the pad was yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice Roman candle idea. Since it used Quest parts, you think if I send the motor back to Gary, I get the motor and the Quest parts? <laughs> Let's see what happens with that one. Um, I have to nominate the cows out there because uh, they would be licking the launch pads at night. We don't know why, but they were. And they lit the trash cans, too. I don't want you people, I, they guess in like the AP or something. I, they're like something. But the cows licking the trash cans. Um, let's see. And along with the cows, Buckley's in my room Friday night when we get here, and he calls Keith, who's out at the, his you know, camper out in the field. He's like, Keith, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Keith, what are you doing? I'm chasing cows. <laughs> Why are you chasing cows? Because they keep going up to the launch pads. I'm trying to keep them away from them. So they don't tear stuff up. Keith finally just gave up because he was one against, like, you know, a lot of cows. So. <laughs> Keith lost to the cows. Um, Thomas Strada did a nice job today blowing apart his PMC and it just didn't go pop, it went boom, and there's pieces went everywhere. Um, Bob Alway tried to hit John Hawkheimer on Tuesday already. I mean, he wasn't even 24 hours into the presidency and there's stuff already going at him. <laughs> so I, joked, I said, yeah, Ted made a call last night and dropped his life insurance policy and Hawkheimer just went whoop. <laughs> Cover that one up. Um, Got to nominate nothing like this, the ultimate spot ever, a fluorescence red cow skull. I mean, you can't, that's better than any old flag sitting out in the field any day. Um, nominate G Streamer because, hey, it was G Streamer. I mean, that deserves a nomination. Um, yeah, we're kind of whittling down there. We're getting down to the good stuff. Um, see, the CD always has to get nominated if you can. He did several things, but the two that came to mind were his. Uh, scale model on the e E6 today where it came apart immediately after liftoff and we had eight seconds of thrash fury. That was heavy metal, not a thrash metal. But, you know, nice, nice thrash in the air. Um, the CD also backed into the launch crew tent and destroyed the leg on Thursday morning. I'm like, John, are you drunk? You sleep because I'm just fried. Yeah, I've been there and done that. So I guess we'll buy a new leg next week. Then there was the, uh, this kind of started on Sunday night and finished up today. They really took this to the whole week span. And this was Dark Side's PMC. 
Now, I wasn't there for it, but Coleman uh, told me what happened was uh, you know, all the models were getting turned in real nice, you know, looking, people walk around the scale room, oh, that's pretty, that's pretty. Here's little Amanda innocently walking around the scale room. Oh, that's a cute little model from Plains. He's got this box there with it. That's cute, but who would do something? It's not going to win. Who would mess with something? She scoots the box up. Oh, man, it's mine. <laughs> yeah, you should know which one your dad built before you start making fun of it. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> then they finished off the day with the Micromax off the pad, which was... <laughs> and that wasn't a crash. That just deserves it because they didn't even give the emphasis to try and crash. <laughs> so that pretty much takes us down to the top three. And so this year in third place, and I couldn't give it to him because I'm tired of giving it to him. Capital's tired of giving it to him. And that's Chan Crash and another plastic model <laughs> and something. You notice the cap trailer was not on the field today. That wasn't by an accident. They heard Chan was coming with a BMC. And they heard what's happened with the trailers before. Second place, and well, just because if I can't raise the bar from when I won it, won it the first time, I ain't gonna win it again. My F-15, which decided to bury itself, it had 28 bombs and missiles on it, and Randy, I expect a lot of mission points because I deployed 25 of 28 missiles. The cockpit glass ejected, and the pilot was at least two feet away from the wreckage. John helped me care. I'm like, that's a mission point. I mean, the cube, that's like three or 400 mission points. Come on. So then you come back to what it is. It's like, well, what really crashed and sunk it up? And we're going to have to give that to Mark Snoffer's Super Rock that actually pierced the tent and put a hole in the rental tent. Anytime you put a hole in something, you know, if it's a human, that's probably not a good thing, but the tent, yeah, that's going to get you kind of win. So first, Naram, great, you won the best award ever. Congratulations, Mark Snoffer. And thank you, Amanda, for putting our lovely, lovely award together.
And it's her same paper. All right, see about that. You guys know I do deserve an award for that. Now we're ready to go, gentlemen. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. And it couldn't do anything. All right, back to it. Back to it. And now we're going to give them now we really are going to give the national champions a division fourth place zachary crampton third place jay richardson Zach Stemper, 22,184 points. I think Zachary's closing in. A division, <laughs> national champion. B Division, third place, Aaron Job. 7,820 points. Second place, Clay Beaver, 9,672 points. First place, Alyssa Spencer, 22,712 points. C Division National Champs, fourth place, Chad Ring. Third place, Mark Snoffer, 11,804. Second place, Keith Vineyard. John Stenberg, 15,040 points.
This is uh, Brian. What was this in here for? I oh. Okay. All right. On to the big one: the Narum Section Championships. Here we go. Fourth place, Flair, thirty-seven thousand two hundred ninety-eight points. Tell the whole section. What's that? Shouldn't the whole section come? Yeah. Tell them all. Yeah. The whole section. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Come on. Everybody. That whole table. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody. 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 The whole, whole section. Come on up. I'll give them out. Start with 
Uh, Narcon, which Trip actually announced earlier this week while we were all here, um, will be February 24th and 26th. It will be near Washington, D.C., near the Ubar Hazy Museum. Uh, he has a lot of activities planned. If you know Trip, uh, he's no slouch. I'm told that this is one of the few things in NAR that Trip hasn't done is run an Archon. So um, he's going to knock us out of the park like he does uh, everything he does. So this will be a great Narcon. Uh, I do not yet have a bid in hand for NSL. I'm talking to some sections. Um, if you're interested in hosting NSL in the future, you should get in touch with me. And I am no longer taking bids for NARAM as the National Events Chair. Uh, the board has really decided that we are going to push forward with a Rock Tree Festival every summer that includes NARAM. So if you're interested in running a NARAM, we want you to think about running a week-long event that includes lots of things for everybody, competitors, sport flyers, um, the whole nine yards. So I do not yet have a bid for NARAM in hand. Again, if you're interested in running a NARAM in the future, think of it more as a rock tree festival that includes NARAM, and uh, get in touch with me. I'm very happy to work with you, as John has been working with you for the last four years. Thank you very much. Back to John. Final item on my agenda, and LaCroix has requested to speak a few minutes. We've got two. <laughs> uh, see this two and a half. Uh, two and a half. That's why I said two. Just a few. My fellow competitors, a lot of you were caught up this past Wednesday night, probably in preparation for R&D events that were going on. That same evening, uh, the expanding competition subcommittee held a meeting and revealed what the future of competition rocketry is likely to be. Uh, a, good num a good number of you were there, and I would like to think that I could safely say that you all came away suitably impressed with the proposal that we've put forward. For those of you who weren't there, Here's what's going to happen next so you can know what is coming. Shortly after NARAM, we will be putting a draft rule book of the new competition format up on NAR.org. We are going to include with that a threaded forum that is much like any regular online forum where you have threads of conversation specific to a topic. And the rule book will be threaded to each of the sections. So once you download the PDF and you snuggle up some night just looking for something to put you to sleep, you can read the rule book. You can get even a chuckle. Read it. Okay. And, and you'll be able to then go on NER.org, find the appropriate section that you have input and comment for the committee and you can begin the process of continued evolution of a new rule book this a draft we only have taken it to a point where it is now ready for the rest of you to help us make it the best possible new future format for competition so if you have any questions i'll be posting up an email contact so you can reach the committee. I really want everyone in this room to know that this has been an effort by myself and Glenn Fevier, Jim Filler, Scott Alexander, and Chad Ring. We are competitors. We are you. We are not trying to do anything but move this forward to a larger and better competition uh, involvement for people of all ages and interest levels. So I hope you will help us and the SQS, as we call it, the Space Modeling Qualifier Series, will run for the first time the year following NARAM 59. So next year is your last year on the pink book. And the color of the new book, you'll get to comment on because we don't know what it is. All right? Thank you very much. Okay, that actually is the last agenda item, except for one thing, door prizes. And Bonnie Johnson has a format that she's going to do.
When we started this, we didn't know how many door prizes we were going to receive. So we gave out the blue coupons. Well, it just so happens we got more door prizes than we have people here at this event. <laughs> so everybody, all of the door prizes are lined up on the tables along the wall over here, and whoever gets there first <laughs> gets first pick. And you ready? No. And then I, and then. Not unless you want to see a 400 pound man crush a lot of people. <laughs> I keep the people in my way. A divisioners first. 